Had a good week this week. Uh, took a couple days just to rest. As I told you, last weekend in the homily, I did some scout fishing in Grand Isle two weeks ago. That meant that this week, I actually went to the spots on the island that I had uh, deemed necessary and uh, thought that they would be good spots. Had a great week. Now, last week, I told you that I was on the rocks and a lightning storm came my way. So you would think to yourself that Father Mark had learned his lesson and he would not go back to the rocks in a storm. Lust, I will prove to you today that I actually am a lot less smarter than you think I am. Thursday was a good day. I was on the rock side. Heard that the weather was going to be a little bad. There was that wave down that's going to Mexico. was bringing some outer bands, and I found myself on the rocks once again. Croakers on the bottom for a little while. Then we had speckle beetles on the, on the top, and, and 21 speckle trout in the bag. Now, I know that uh, the limit's 25. Almost all of them were legal. <laughs> they, were, they were all legal. So anyway, so I have 21 speckled trout in the bag, and I'm doing fine, and I can see from the south, I'm looking at the gulf, throwing against the rocks. I can, I can see that this little storm's coming my way. It doesn't look like a big storm, because I can see the beginning of the storm coming, and I can see that the storm has an end. I can see behind it, so I'm not really afraid. Now, to be honest with you, because I'm in front of Jesus in the tabernacle, I have to admit that the only reason I stayed on the rocks is because I had 21 trout in the bag. Now, I rationalized staying on the rocks through the rainstorm because, of course, i got to wade through the water to get back to the beach. I'm going to get it wet anyway. Might as well just stay wet on the rocks, right? So sure enough, as, a, as the storm comes my way, it starts to rain. I can see the end of the storm. The storm passes, and for the next two hours, I did not get one single bite to prove to me once again that I need to listen to the Lord whenever he tells me to go home. Amen? Good news about that storm, and as I was driving back on Saturday morning to get here from Mass yesterday afternoon, I was kind of reflecting upon that whole experience, very grateful to the Lord for the gift of being in Grand Isle, for the gift of the fish. It all came from him. But kind of thinking about that storm and how our lives are often a lot like that. Amen? We have storms in the physical world. Sometimes they come and go real, real quick like the pop-up storm that hit me on Thursday. Sometimes those storms are big. We call those hurricanes, Katrina or Rita, last year Isaac. But a lot of times we have storms in our, our spiritual lives also. Sometimes life is tough. Sometimes life doesn't meet your expectations. Sometimes, as we said last week, bad things happen to good people. Sometimes you just go through a storm in your family. Sometimes you go through storms in your, in your marriage. Sometimes you go through a storm in your finances. Sometimes... You find yourself saying the very same thing that we said in the responsorial psalm. You say to yourself, Lord, come to my aid. When's the last time you did that? When's the last time you hit a storm? When's the last time something happened in your life, in your marriage, in your family, your finances, at work? When's the last time you actually came before the Lord and said, Lord, come to my aid. I need your help. Some of us are actually in a storm right now. And you come into church today and you need God to say something to you. Well, here's the good news. He's got, a, he's got a word for us today. For some of us, we just pulled out the storm. Some of us, it, it's coming down the pike. So it's important that we listen to the readings today and let the prophet Jeremiah give us a lot of hope. So let's take a look at the prophet Jeremiah. I'm going to grab your missalette. Let's go to page 27. Brown book, missalette. I'm going to grab your missalette. I want to take a look at a few things from the prophet Jeremiah as we look at storms, the storms of life. What do they teach us? And how can we, as we learn from those storms, be more anchored in the Lord, allowing him to show us how to get through the storms of life? Page 27, I'm going to pick it up in the 38th chapter of the prophet Jeremiah. 
page 27, Jeremiah chapter 38. It says right there, verse 4, the very first line, it says, In those days the princes said to the king, Jeremiah ought to be put to death. I'd say that's a storm. I'd say that's a tough patch. People want Jeremiah to die. But notice the beginning of the line. In those days, the princes said to the king. You know, it's funny. Sometimes storms actually come from the people who are closest to you. Sometimes storms actually come from your family. They come in your marriage. They come in your kids, your siblings. Sometimes the storms that we face in life are actually caused by the people who are closest to us. Jeremiah, the princess said to the king, Jeremiah ought to be put to death. Right there in the middle of the paragraph, verse 5, it starts with and. Look at that with me. It says, and so they took Jeremiah and threw him into the cistern. A cistern, it's a well. Imagine the well. We don't know how deep it was, but it was deep enough to have water. As they put Jeremiah in the cistern, sometimes the storms that we face, it feels like we're trapped in something deep and dark. In fact, last line in the first paragraph, verse 6, it says, There was no water in the cistern, only mud. And Jeremiah sank into the mud. Sometimes when you're in a storm, it seems as if it can't get worse, and then all of a sudden, it does. Jeremiah's in their cistern, there's no water, and it says that he's in the mud, and he sinks into the mud. A lot of times when you're in a storm, you feel like you're sinking. It feels like you're trapped. There's no way out. And that's oftentimes when we say, Lord, come to my aid. I need you. Three things about storms that we want to hold on to today. Number one, storms have a beginning and an end. Number two, storms reveal what we are attached to. And number three, God can bring freedom in our lives during a storm. So let's hold on to those three things together. The first is that storms have a beginning and an end. Say that with me. Storms have a beginning and an end. It's important that you know that. I was on the rocks this week. I was fishing, and I could see the end of the storm. So as the storm began, as it began to rain, I had a lot of hope because I could see that it was not going to last forever. It's one of the reasons why I discerned just to stay out there. It was not going to last long. I could see it was going to pass by very quickly. And if only we had that kind of vision or sight whenever the storms begin. But here's the thing that happens. Whenever you go through a storm in life, it just seems like it's never, ever going to get better. When somebody's sick or when you get strife or drama in your marriage, it just seems like it's never going to get better. It's always going to be like this. Raising kids, raising kids is tough, especially when they get older. Whenever you're butting heads with, your, with one of your, your kids and it just seems like that, that, that tension's going to always be there. That storm's going to always be there. It's never going to get better. Not like fighting with your family, right? Because you can not only talk about the thing you're fighting about, but you can bring each other's history into it also, right? When you're fighting with your family, when there's tension inside the family, it just seems like it's going to go on forever. So it's important for us to remember that storms have a beginning and an end. A lot of times the hopelessness that we experience in our life, that out of despair we cry out to the Lord, a lot of times that hopelessness comes from the fact that we never think it's going to end. And of course the scriptures tell us, and of course nature tells us that storms do have a conclusion. So the first thing I want you to hold on to is that storms have a beginning and an end. Second thing, storms reveal what we are attached to. Say that with me. Storms reveal what we are attached to. Storms. Storms in relationships. I'll tell you a little bit about myself. We'll get to know each other over the next 12 months in an appropriate storm. Probably the, one of the biggest ones in my life. I uh, graduated from Nichols, moved up to Washington, D.C., prior to me going to the seminary. 
fell in love. Let's just call her Eve. Adam and Eve, always a good name for the girl, right? Let's just call her Eve. Eve captured me, captured my heart. Beautiful. This Cajun boy didn't know what to do with Eve, and, and I just fell head over heels for her. This Cajun boy didn't know what to do with a lot of things. I moved up to Washington, D.C. I met Eve at the beginning of my time there, and I was in an internship, but I, I moved up there to get a job with this management consulting firm, which I eventually did. And, and I have to admit to you that, um, yeah, I've had a, a lot of bumps in my, in my road, a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of valleys in my journey. And that was a dark time for me. I lost myself in, in that job. In the office at sick, back home at, at midnight, working Monday through Saturday, chasing something that I was never going to capture. But I wanted to be somebody. Remember in July of 1995, I, I flew home with Eve to introduce Eve to my mom and dad. But to be honest with you, the only reason I came home was to impress people. And I'm not, I'm not proud of that, but that's a part of my history. So I wanted to, I wanted to come home and and show people how much money I was making and how pretty Eve was. And I wanted to prove to everybody that I was somebody. Flew back to Washington. That was in June. In July, you know, I, I loved dating Eve. And she loved dating me. In fact, she, she loved dating a lot of people. <laughs> All at the same time. I can laugh now, but I wasn't laughing then. <laughs> now, I've got to be honest with you. Um, there's always a two-way street here. There's always a give and take. Uh, you know, I have to admit there was a lot of reasons why she went looking for a greener grass on the other side of the fence. Uh, I, I wasn't having an affair with any one person, but I was cheating on her at work. I was giving my heart to, job, to the job. I was giving my heart to the corporate ladder. I spent less and less time with her. I spent more and more time at work. I was chasing something at work. I was not giving myself to her. And, and I, I have to own in my own life the mistakes I made. And I'm not excusing what happened there, but I have to own the fact that I was very responsible for a lot of the, the this distance in our relationship that I think fed her wandering eyes. You want to know the sad thing? The sad thing about the whole situation is that as I called home to tell mom and dad that I was not going to marry Eve, I wasn't really upset about the relationship. It was very clear that I'm, I wasn't going to get married to her. I was more ashamed of having to admit to people that I had failed. I was attached to vanity. I was attached to being somebody. I wanted to impress everybody. I was attached to my identity being something grounded in the world. You, know what, you want to know what that storm revealed to me? That I was attached to all the wrong things in life and I was looking for love in all the wrong places. I was looking for my identity in all the wrong places. That storm, thank God, revealed to me where, where I was not living in him and that I was attached not to Eve, but I was attached to image. Storms do that. I tell you something right now. Storms will reveal to you where your priorities are. They will reveal to you where your priorities are and where the people who are in the storm with you, where their priorities are. And what happens a lot of times in conflict is when your priorities are one way and other people's priorities are another way and they conflict with each other and then you throw in a very emotional situation and you got yourself a storm and conflict in some life-changing drama. Storms reveal what we are attached to. And number three, storms allow God to bring us freedom. Say that with me. Storms allow God to bring us freedom. Now let me say this real, real clearly. God does not cause Storms. God does not make bad things happen to good people. God does not want us to suffer so that we can suffer. But God allows things to unfold. Why? So he can bring us freedom. Now, not every storm is going to bring us freedom, but I can tell you this. 
There are a lot of storms in our life where we will, reve- we, we will come face to face with a, an area of our life that's, that's not in relationship with him, an area of our life that we are attached to something else, and, and God wants to bring us freedom there. I was talking to a buddy of mine. He lives, grew up in a country that's not our country, and we were talking about hunting and fishing and his country and our country and just kind of getting to know each other in different cultures and just different ways of life. And he was telling me about, a, about a, a particular animal that they hunt there, and this is how they hunt. You take a long, slender vase, open-ended at the bottom, put a banana, and the animal sticks his hand in the vase to get the banana, but he can't pull it out. And that's it. Come right up to him. You can, you can shoot him. You can put a net on him. You can do whatever you want. Why? Because he will not let go of that banana. He will hold on to the very thing that enslaves him. Instead of letting go of the very thing that's going to bring him death, he will hold on to that attachment. You ever see anybody do that in their life? They, they hold on to the very thing that determines their unhappiness. Ever, ever realize you do that? We hold on to the very things that cause our unhappiness. He wants to bring us freedom. He wants to liberate us. He comes into our life. Christ comes into our life, and he says to us, hey, if you let go of that thing that you're attached to, the storm will pass, and I will bring you into freedom. Why did I stay on those rocks fishing? Because of those fish? Now, I like fish, but I don't like fish enough to get killed. But when I'm out there fishing, I got 21 in the bag, I got four left to my limit, I'm caught up in the moment, I'm holding on to the very thing that's going to cause my unhappiness. When we're in a storm, if we let God into our life, he can actually bring freedom from the attachments if we let him. For example, back to the reading. The last line, which is verse 10. Then the king ordered the Cushite to take three men along with him and draw the prophet Jeremiah out of the cistern before he should die. God entered into that storm. He entered into what was there, and he lifted Jeremiah out of this thing that he was entrapped in. There will be a moment in our life, whether you are in a storm right now, whether you're going to get into one, whether you just came out of one, if you look at our lives, there will be moments where he's going to tell us the storm has a beginning and an end. That storm will reveal what we are attached to. And if we let him into our life, he can bring freedom from the very things that actually hold us sometimes in the storm. But this isn't about Jeremiah, is it? It's about people like me and you. It's people like Eve, people like us, who don't love, live in beautiful churches like this all the time. We, we live real lives with kids who don't meet our expectations and finances that go up and down and jobs which are hard and people who are messy and family members who change over time and marriages which are difficult. And sometimes you and I face storms. And I want you to remember today that your storm even if you're in it right now, it's going to end soon enough. Right now, God's revealing perhaps in your life what your attachments are so that he can bring freedom. He pulled Jeremiah out that cistern, and he can do the same for us if we keep our eyes on him, even when we find ourselves in a storm. Amen?